I have a really simple Premiere Pro timeline set up. Some really simple motion graphics. I didn't want a huge project because I just want to show that Premiere Pro can go from Mac to PC pretty easy. We can see that this is the exact same timeline or sequence that I had on the PC. It's dropping frames because I have a mediocre dual core i5 processor, but for the purpose of this video, it should work out just fine. If I click on this clip here, it says test 01 MTS. This says test 01 MTS. It's part of the same clip. Now, if I was to apply an effect right here, it would just affect this particular clip and that's it. I'll demonstrate that right now. I'll go to the Lumetri color panel. I'll select the basic color correction and I'm just gonna do something really quick just so people can see that, yeah. It made a switch on here, it's got a red tint. But if I come over here, this one doesn't have a red tint to it at all. Let me click back on here. I wanna delete this, this uh, effect. What I wanna do is go on to the master clip effect. Now if I drop and drag it over on here, and if I go to the basic color correction, I'm gonna give it that red tint again, just so people can tell that it's been messed with a little bit, that we've altered the color on it. And I know it looks kind of horrible, but I just want people to see that, yeah, you can definitely tell a difference. Now, if I come over here, this one has the same effect applied to it because it's the same clip and I've applied it to the master right here, as opposed to just applying it here. So they're both gonna have that master color effect on it. This clip here does not have the color effect on it, but I can apply it to that really easy. If I click right here, here we have the master color effect. As we see, this one has the red tint. We can see it easy enough that this has been altered. These three have not been altered, but if I hit Control C and then I highlight these as well, let me hit Shift and then I hit Control V, I can copy and paste it. So now when we come over here, we can see that this does have the red tint. If you wanted to play this back, it's still gonna drop frames, but what I like about Premiere Pro is you can disable the effects. And if I wasn't running screen capture software, this would play back just fine. I've applied color correction to several different clips, but before I bring this back to the PC, I wanna just swap out this particular image file with the image file that's right there. I'll just right click, replace with clip from bin. And I think that's pretty good. I'm gonna save this as is, and then I'm gonna bring it in on my Windows 10 PC. And you'll see that all the changes have been applied. We can see this is the exact same project, timeline or sequence, whatever you wanna say that was on the Mac mini. This will play back in real time, obviously, because I've got a quad core in this particular computer, plus I have a dedicated graphics card. I just wanted to show people it's really easy to go between Mac and PC when you're dealing with Premiere Pro projects. It's really super simple, provided you know your hard drive is partitioned in format to EXFAT. You don't wanna use NTFS and you don't wanna use the HFS plus of the Apple operating system. I wanna let people know if you have like a little jump drive, a USB thumb drive or jump drive or an SD card that's like 256 gigabytes or even 64 gigabytes, those can go from Mac to PC really super easy. I tested it out. It's just if you have a hard drive, you know, an external hard drive, kind of like mine where it's actually an internal hard drive, I've just got it in an enclosure to be able to connect, you know, externally by USB 3.0. I want to let people know this is the external hard drive. If I double click on it, we can see I got Mac versus PC folder. I can collapse that. QuickTime and Shadow Play. Not much really to see. If I click on here and opt to get the info, we can see that it's partition and format for EXFAT. That's what you need to partition your hard drive to if you want to be able to share data between Mac and PC. It's very easy to do. We just click on launch pad where it says other. We click on that. We go to disk utility. Here's where we have my Samsung hard drive. We would opt to click erase. We could erase it, repartition and format it. It's pretty simple, pretty easy to do. This hard drive right here is the same hard drive that was connected to the Mac mini. We can see the exact same folder showing up. 
This, these two files here, as well as this folder, is something the Mac operating system puts on by default. You might not see them. I've got Windows 10 set up to show hidden files and hidden folders. But if I click the Mac versus PC folder, we can see it's the exact same thing. If I hit Premiere Pro, it's the exact same thing that was on the Mac and Mini. Not, nothing really major there. If I right-click on the hard drive, I can format easy enough. It's set to NTFS by default, but you can opt for EXFAT. I'll close out of here. Another way where you can partition format the hard drive with Windows 10 is to right-click at the Start menu, go to Disk Management. This will give you more options, and you can see all the hard drives, but you would still just right-click it. You could go Delete Volume or Format. Either way would get you on your way to partitioning and formatting the hard drive for EXFAT. As you can see, we see NTFS and EXFAT hard drives on my system right now. I know some of you are probably wondering if I have to keep disconnecting that hard drive between the Mac and the PC to share projects and files. The answer is no, I don't. Since they're both hot swappable hard drive bays, I can just take the physical hard drive out from one and pop it into the enclosure of the other one. I don't have to go behind the back of my PC or behind the back of the Macintosh. That hard drive just stays connected to the Macintosh at all times. I want to end this video by stating I could use the Mac Mini as a cuts-only editing system for high definition, whether it's AVC, HD, or HDV. I could obviously edit standard definition on the Mac Mini as well. It will work for that purpose. I can't edit 4K on it. And I just want to also end this video by stating, if you plug an enclosure like mine into the Mac Mini, don't hesitate to plug it into a different USB port if it's not being recognized. Once in a while, I will have to unplug it and plug it back in, but for the most part, it works pretty well.